There's a lot of discussion about Joe Biden. And the Washington Post, one of their premier columnists, said yesterday, as we discussed, hey, Joe Biden, you shouldn't run in 2024. You need to make the decision in the next 30 days. CNN, by the way, Buck, is reporting that Joe Biden is planning a big address on, what do you think? Threats to democracy. He's planning another big speech on threats to democracy. I mean, there, it's Joe Biden. There are a lot of ways that could have gone. You know, the threat of yeah. pickles falling from the sky <laughs> or, you know, finding a chicken and a fox on top of the roof at the same time. You never know what Joe Biden's going to say. Well, just for everybody out there who thinks they probably have already, you know, like squeezed every possible bit of political benefit out of January 6th, CNN is reporting Van Biden planning speech on threats to democracy in coming weeks, sources say. Um, and the opening paragraph of this from CNN, just so you know, because we were talking about this last hour, and I was like, oh, this is, you know, crazy. President Joe Biden plans, this is the opening of the article, President Joe Biden plans to deliver a speech focused on threats to democracy. Democratic donors gathered in Chicago for a fundraising retreat learned of the plans Wednesday. Uh, Biden plans to deliver the speech following the second Republican primary debate. Uh, one venue under consideration for the speech is the McCain Institute. Uh, and uh, he is going to, remember, he went to Independence Hall, which I think is the one you talked about in Philadelphia, where it was backlit, all the red. I think that was Independence Hall. Uh, and he also did one in D.C. He also traveled down to Georgia and said that basically the Civil War was still going on and uh, that the change in the voting bill in Georgia was the equivalent of Jim Eagle, far worse than Jim Crow. So I just think it's important for everybody out there to understand that the Biden-Harris regime is not going to do anything different. They're going to continue the same message that they tried to sell in 2022, which is Trump is a dictator and American democracy will end if he ends up in power. I, You know, it's I, I feel like there's no upside maybe in, in saying this, but the Trump team, some of whom listen to this show, um, they need to be prepared for the fact that I already know what the ads are going to be against Trump from Biden. Yeah. And there's a lot of exuberance right now among uh, the Trump. I'm talking about faithful from the campaign that they have. And, and I think everybody would admit this. I mean, they have absolutely so far completely crushed the Republican primary competition in a way that, uh, you know, it's just you, no it's one. For, no one foresaw happening. I don't even think Un Trump undeni would. nobody was saying this was like, I think people thought Trump would be up 15 points. Trump might maybe be up 20. I mean, Trump up you know, 40, 50, 60 points, whatever, whatever it is. No one saw this coming. OK, that's the Republican primary. He's a former president. People stay with him. People want to see him back in power on the right. How does all of this play in a, on the Democrat side of things? The ads they are going to run against Trump are very apparent. They are very easy and they are made for a media saturation environment. It's going to be Jan 6. It's going to be Trump statements. It's going to be, uh, you know, I think they're going to make ads of people who got prison sentences for January 6. who say that Trump abandoned them, for example. I mean, you've already started to see the media pick up on those stories, meaning Jan 6 defendants. Uh, so that's their, you know, the reelection campaign for Biden is going to be all that. You know, as well as, you know, to your point, Clay, it'll be, you know, at different states, they'll tailor it, a bit of abortion rights here, you know, a little class warfare there. I mean, there'll be some variations on this, but the primary theme will be Joe Biden is a steady custodian of democracy against a lunatic, unreliable, dictatorial, dictatorial, blah, blah, Trump is Hitler. Um, but those ads, we need to have a response or at least need to have an effective enough line of attack against Biden that it neutralizes the effect that they're going to hope those ads have. Not on me, not on you, not on this audience, but on people in six swing states. And that's the whole That's the whole thing. Okay, so Biden, um, I just want to give you the background, what he's planning according to CNN. Uh, yesterday, we talked about the uh, column saying he shouldn't run as also an attack on Kamala because... If you really thought that Joe Biden had done a great job and Kamala Harris had worked alongside of him and done a good job too, yeah, Democrats wouldn't be that panicked. They would say, okay, we're just, because I think, Buck, would you agree with me? 
No one expected that in the fall of 2023, and I'm counting it as fall, even though we're not quite officially to fall, right? That in the fall of 2023, we would be sitting here expecting Joe Biden to run again. I think if you had been in, you know, like January of 2020, if we'd been doing this show, we would have said, he's going to hand the baton to Kamala. 2024 will be all about Kamala. Seamless that would be. That would yeah. make that makes perfect sense. That's actually the situation that I think the Democrats were were prepared for the, the whole time. The problem that they've run into is that just like you know, we were talking about no one expected Trump was going to be able to blow out his competition this much this quickly in the primary. Um, I don't think anyone on the Democrat side expected that Kamala Harris would, with Democrats, have such a deficit. That that she would, she's a vice president, Clay. It's a ceremony. In fact, wait, can we can we do some of the Pelosi? Let, let's get into some. Yeah, of this we've now, got right? the audio. So Let, the, let's get some of this going here because she's pushed on this a little bit. For this is uh, Anderson Cooper, who's apparently still doing a show. Anderson Cooper is uh, talking to Kamala Harris here. I'm, I'm sorry, talking to Nancy Pelosi and asks her about whether Kamala Harris is the best choice. Play twelve. Is, is, is Vice President that Kamala that Harris the best running mate for this president? He thinks so. And that's what matters. And by the way, so? she's very politically astute. I don't think people give her enough credit. But do you think she is the, the best running mate, though? She's the vice president of the United States. So people say to me, well, why isn't she doing this or that? I said, because she's the vice president. That's the job description. Can, can, I, can, I, just point, can I just point out? That is, that, like, pretty nasty from Nancy Pelosi. Well, but it is somewhat true. But think about that, right? They thought that Kamala would be perfect because they elevated her for diversity and inclusion politics purposes beyond the rest of the field. There were more popular other Democrats, right? I'm, I'm now speaking, if, if, if I'm putting my Democrat strategist hat on, so to speak, they thought Kamala brings youth, she brings females, she brings minority all to the ticket, you know, rel- rel- youth, relatively speaking, for a politician. Um, and they thought that that would be good enough because she doesn't really have to do anything. What's remarkable is that even in a role where she was expected to not do very much, she has been a failure among her own party. You know what, you know what I mean? This is yeah, like... But, but, Buck, I mean, this is like pretty nasty by Nancy Pelosi. Can we play this audio again? That's a very easy question to answer. Do oh, you, you mean the think... first part of it? Because I'm like, the last part of it, John Adams agreed, like, the, pre- yeah. the vice president's a joke yeah, job. Yeah, but, but it's worth a bucket of spit or whatever. But listen to this again. I mean, this is, an e- this is Nancy Pelosi, whatever you think, is not Dianne Feinstein. She's not Joe Biden. Uh, she is able to answer questions candidly. Her brain works. It's an easy question, Buck. If you got asked and you were speaking for Nancy Pelosi, like, uh, Anderson Cooper asked that question, Joe Biden believes she's the right choice, and I do too. It's well, done. Ima- imagine if Anderson Cooper asked you or me and said, do you, do you think that Donald Trump could win again and be a good president? And we're like, I mean, I've heard other people say that. <laughs> or he thinks so. <laughs> you know? I mean, if, that, if our answer yeah. was he thinks so, you would be like, well, oh, that's okay. And then yeah. he follows up and says, no, no, no. Do you think? Listen to this again. Because, and also remember, a lot of these questions. Well, he pushes her again. Do you want to? Yeah, that's what I'm going. saying. Oh, okay. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to hear the whole thing. I mean, but I'll, you know this. A lot of these questions that Anderson Cooper decides to ask, there's some sort of budding idea that Nancy well, Pelosi doesn't like Kamala Harris. I, I, that, that I have a theory. Aware of. I have a theory about all of this. But let, let's play 13. Listen this is the next time. one where Cooper pushes. What stood out to me, though, certainly was her answer about Kamala Harris. Um, first of all, she didn't say yes. She didn't. Well, she said it was Biden's decision. Right. And more importantly, she actually offered like a nugget of defense of Vice President Harris, which is like she is politically astute. And if there's one thing about Nancy Pelosi, she respects wins. Mm. That's what she always brought to the caucus. That's the energy she brings to things. And she very much said, look, this person can do it. OK, don't underestimate them. And she didn't have to say that. Um, there's lots of people who have been kind of squirrely in their answers and she wasn't. OK, no, no sorry. That was actually clean up by is that um, that's that's Maggie Haberman, right? That's what it, that's I think I recognize that voice. Um, that was Anderson Cooper speaking to Haberman about the Pelosi sit down with Cooper. We don't actually have this on the sheet right now, but Cooper went back to Pelosi again in the same exchange and said, 
you're like not talking about this. Is that really how you, you know, I'm paraphrasing here, but it's clear she didn't want to get into it. Clay, this, this is my theory. I just want to throw this out there. Maybe yeah. we can get the second part of the Pelosi. Because it was a longer, it was like a 2.30 exchange, and we've got like 18 seconds of it there. But um, this is what I said uh, yesterday or the day before. They, you know, the Ignatius column, this is the, the Democrats who are like, guys, Biden, it, it can't be. They're the, the apparatus, the Pelosi's, the, the top of the, of the DNC hierarchy are saying, shut up. This is what we've got. Don't try to start some internal, you know, Democrat palace coup. I think that's really what you're seeing play out, meaning they, they're, they're trying to hold it from breaking through. The, it can't be Joe, we got to do something else, which is what Ignatius was saying. They don't want that to break through. Yeah, and I think we've got Pelosi responding directly to that column that we talked about yesterday as well. Pelosi is asked, you saw what Ignatius said in his column in the Washington Post. Here's what she said about Biden and whether he should run. Do you think there's any chance he does not continue running? I hope not. I hope not. I mean, this president... David has- Ignatius recently came out saying he, he thinks the former president should not run. Yeah, so that's one. <laughs> That's a good answer, right? Again, I you can dislike Nancy Pelosi um, and her politics. I, I think her politics are very wrong. She's a very good advocate for her positions. Oh, she's she's ruthless and has wielded power for Democrats very effective, and, and you know ga- gathered and wielded power very effectively from the left and done a lot of damage to the country in the process for a long time. But Clay, this is what I mean: if Nancy Pelosi, if they were going to replace Joe. Or if there were some plan here, if Nancy Pelosi had gone on Anderson Cooper's show and said, you know, we do have a process in place and we're thinking, you know, if she had left it open, yeah. there would be more momentum. There'd be more momentum. Pelosi is laughing at it. One guy's opinion, shut it down. And I, I do think Nancy Pelosi not answering on Kamala Harris, really, because that's an easy question for her. This is not like, hey, what do you think's going on in... Yeah some tiny subset of Ukraine, Russia, where you're like, well, I might not be that informed on it. Do you think he thinks so? Is there, did, when you, you just, get asked a question about yourself and you say somebody else's opinion, that's telling. Yeah, did, didn't you also raise, I, I, the, whether Pelosi and Kamala, I don't think Pelosi likes Kamala Harris. I don't think so either. Yeah, I, I think you alluded to this a, a few moments ago and I was thinking about it. I, I don't think Pelosi likes Kamala Harris. I'm I sure there's Kamala a Harris there's a bit of a well competition between that. They're both California you know, politicians. Um, I, I don't think that Kamala Harris well, is. Let's let's just be honest. Nancy Pelosi is from San Francisco. How did Kamala Harris get her start in politics by being the mistress of the mayor of San Francisco, uh, Willie Brown? So if you are Nancy Pelosi, you have known Kamala Harris for a long time, and the first time you probably would have been acquainted with her is by finding out that she's the mistress of the mayor of San Francisco. I bet Nancy Pelosi doesn't respect that. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, think, I think you are correct. Most married women, generally speaking, do not respect the mistress of a married man. Just tossing that out there. there the, the side chick is not typically favorably disposed by the married women. And Nancy Pelosi would have known Kamala Harris for decades before she ever became a national political figure. And I would suspect that Nancy Pelosi is not very well disposed towards Kamala Harris. Plus, she called the president a racist. Like, the fact that Joe Biden even put her on the ticket to me is still This is what I was going to go, where I was going to go. I I think, you know, we can always get into this mindset we did a whole bunch of like an analytic training about this back in the CIA days of assuming that the, your opponent always has some plan that was well thought out and maybe there was some problem in the execution. Sometimes people just do stupid things. Yeah. Sometimes even really smart or really astute people do stupid things. The choice of Kamala Harris as VP in retrospect now by Biden and his handlers it just seems it just seems like it was a blunder. I mean, I, you know, I I don't yeah. think I don't think it was well thought out. But then she didn't execute very well. Nobody should have thought she was going to execute well in the role, even if it's a role that's very limited in terms of the obligations and responsibilities. I th- I think what happened is, and again, this would be easy if Biden really liked Kamala Harris. You see this happen all the time with coaches. You retire when they can't name somebody else, so your number two guy gets automatically elevated. 
If Biden really liked Kamala, he would announce in like June, hey, I'm not going to run in 2024. Kamala is the person. There's nothing else. I think he doesn't like her either. <laughs> I don't think anybody does. 